What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Keefe, and you're watching another GhostColdMan.com's 5-Minute Review. On tap today, Slipknot's new album, The End, so far. First things first, chances are this is your first time at the channel, so thanks for stopping by. If you like what you see, drop a comment or subscribe. We really appreciate it. With that out of the way, let's get into it. We're here to talk about The End So Far, the new Slipknot album coming out on Roadrunner Records September 30th, 2022, and the final record of Slipknot's career on Roadrunner. They have vowed to break off and either go to a new label or form their own label, nobody knows. But this is their brand new album, only two years since We Are Not Your Kind came out. The band has been killing it throughout the pandemic era, in the before times, the during times, and the after. Not Fest festivals all over the world, the Not Fest Roadshow Tour in North America and Europe. Unbelievable success. Slipknot is the biggest band in the metal world except for Metallica, and like them or not, they move the needle for everybody else. The new record is their seventh record in 27 years officially as Slipknot. The only remaining original member of the band is M. Sean Crahan, the clown, and he still continues to drive and direct this band. Interestingly enough, Jim Root said this album he was barely involved in and wasn't sure how he felt about the outcome of it, making this only the second record without a deep impact from Jim in the songwriting department. He joined Slipknot in the middle of recording the debut self-titled album in 99, so this is his second least effective album in terms of his contribution. Sad to hear, but excited for the future. Supposedly, Slipknot has a whole other album that is completed and ready to go, and don't know if we're ever going to hear it. It's more of supposed to be like soundtracky, soundscape stuff composed by Clown, but supposedly going to come out eventually under the Slipknot banner. This album is co-produced with Slipknot and Evil Joe Barisi, who's well known for his work with Tool and other bands. Joe mixed the previous album, and this album they co-produced themselves. Slipknot at this point, they've produced a lot of other records, and they can definitely produce their own stuff. Without further ado, producer Omar Cordy, please put five minutes on the clock, and let's get it started. The end so far begins with a huge curveball, Adderall, an absolute piano ballad, a torch song that wouldn't be out of place on a Ben Folds record, or the Dresden Dolls, Amanda Palmer, Billy Joel, Elton John. It's got a great rock pop sensibility. It's not soft, it's very emotionally heavy, but it's definitely not metal or rock per se. Very interesting song that wouldn't be out of place on a Queens of the Stone Age album or a Stone Sour record. There's a lot of experimentation on this album, and Adderall is the first indication that this is not your older brother's Slipknot record. The second track is the dying song, Time to Sing, one of the more recent singles from the album. If you were worried about the first track, have no fears. This song is here to allay all your fears. This is brutal, catchy, heavy, all the things you love from Slipknot, and definitely is a portent for the heavier stuff on the record having a definite old school Slipknot feel airing back to their first couple of records. The next track was also a single, The Chapel Town Rag, released almost a year ago and definitely holds up still after a year. It's absolutely brutal and reminds me a lot of the stuff on Iowa and the self-titled debut. Absolute banger of a performance from Corey, who totally slays on this album all over the map with his singing, screaming, rapping, rhyming, venting, everything. The next track is Yen, which we did a reaction video to the visualizer and the single when it dropped. You can check that out here at the link above for a deep dive on that song. But Yen is another song, a lot of dynamics on this track, not unlike a Stained or a Tool would do, and very interesting, soft to heavy, heavy chorus kind of dynamics that makes the band awesome. Again, not the most atypical Slipknot song, but definitely not so left field that it sounds weird being on a Slipknot record. Hive Mind is the next track on the record, and it's definitely got a real sinister groove going on, like a 90s metal, like a Pantera. Absolute strong song, great riffs, and a very cool Easter egg at the very end of the song that I think is a callback to the original Matrix record. You check it out and let me know if you heard what I heard. Warranty is the next song on the record and it marks the midway point in the record. Warranty is one of the shorter songs on the record. Not too many super long songs, but this record clocks in a little over three and a half minutes and it's absolutely a banger. It's super brutal. Warranty definitely has a bit of that riff salad you're accustomed to if you love Slipknot. And there's definitely a lot of callbacks in the percussion work and the mixing and the scratching and the DJ work and the soundscape stuff that will definitely call to mind the first Slipknot record. Perhaps my favorite song on the whole record, Medicine for the Dead, 
definitely all the things you love about Slipknot in one song. It's super heavy. It's definitely interesting and catchy. And the chorus has a great descending melody that Corey doubles his own voice on that sounds fantastic. Another surprising track is Acidic, the eighth track on the record. It's very slow and almost blues rock heavy metal, kind of like an Alice in Chains or a Soundgarden would do back in the grunge days. Not out of place on a Stone Sour record, but surely a little odd on a Slipknot record, but still a very good change. Not a soft song, it's not a bad song. It's just a different change of pace for the band. Heirloom is the ninth track on the album and it absolutely begins with a complete chaos blast bomb of riffs and beats and turntable scratching. Some of the finest work of DJ Sid's work in his career in the band. A lot of cool stuff going on this track. It gets a little more straight ahead as it kicks into full gear, but definitely a solid song. H377 is the 10th song on the record, and it is totally sick. It's an absolute death metal rager. It's one of the more extreme songs on the album, one of the most extreme songs the band has ever done. It's got a tremendous breakdown riff and part toward the end of the song with a sick gang vocal at the end. If they play this song live, it's definitely gonna be one for the moshers. The next to last song on the album is Desaad, and I want to applaud Corey Taylor for correctly saying Desaad, as in Marquis Desaad, the author of BDSM writings, not Chardet or Marquis Marquis de Sade A, uh, like Brad Pitt did in Seven, but this song's also another rager, super heavy, probably the second heaviest song on the record, and really, really cool verses, choruses, and a great, great end part. Finale is the final song on the record appropriately titled, and it's much more of a heavy rock song than an extreme metal song, but it's a definitely good choice to close the album on. It definitely continues the moody, experimental vibe of the record. Perhaps one of the reasons this album is so experimental is the band co-produced it themselves, and it definitely has a lot in common with Joe Barresi, and just very interesting stuff going on here throughout the record where they took a lot of chances with the writing. As I said earlier, Jim didn't write too much, so this is really a product of other members of the band. Uh, perhaps the first record with Michael Pfaff, but I'm not sure that he got to compose too much stuff except for percussion parts. So just a very interesting record overall. As Gary Alcock wrote in his review at ghostcoldmag.com, which you can read at the link below, as confrontational, volatile, and polarizing as ever, the end so far could very well be the most divisive album of Slipknot's entire career, but it also happens to be one of their best. We give this album a 9 out of 10. It's definitely a keeper for the year. It's definitely going to factor into the year-end best of lists all around, and it's definitely a stay list for your playlist. That's our review. I'm Keefe from ghostcoldman.com. If you like what you see, once again, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Drop a comment and let us know what other upcoming albums you would like us to review, and we'll give it a go here on the channel. I'm Keefe from ghostcoldman.com, and we're out.